Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Now welcome to Barcelona. Well, you're not actually in Barcelona, you're just watching a race of Barcelona. So Group 3, Barcelona, Circuit to Catalonia. Now this is probably the best uh, daily race this week, or weekly race this week. Race A, Audi TT. It's a messy race that one. And Race C, Toyota GT86, Fuji. Did it once, it wasn't that great. So that leaves us with this group three cars at Barcelona good to see Barcelona I suppose doesn't always come up so let's see what we can do then seventh on the grid our lap time was 145.4 now if I had done a 145.3 I would have qualified third it just shows you how close the grid order was so hopefully that will give us a close race we'll see exactly whether or not that pans out and is the case so already slightly off the room in front. I've gone for the Porsche 911 here, despite the Audi R8 being the car I qualified in and is technically quicker. Already we have someone off the circuit doing his best Nico Rosberg slash Lewis Hamilton impression at that turn. So this Frenchman in the orange Audi, look out for him during the course of the video because he will feature many times. Going for the cut back on him, see so when in narrow, and therefore gets a compromised exit so getting the better traction up the inside into sixth place the battle ahead raging on for second you see the lead is already gone he doesn't really want to be part of this and i don't blame him at all as we come through the fast sweeping uphill right hander of turn nine there's the penalty zone so of course the new penalty zones which were in the fia races have now carried over into the daily races so you can't just carry a penalty to the line and it really is much more of a penalty now to well, to get a penalty. You're going to lose a lot more time and positions. Looking up the inside here, the gap was open. And I can't quite capitalise on that opening. And around a track like this, you really do need to capitalise on all the opportunities given to you. Because it is, it is a difficult track to overtake around. Uh, F1 proves that. GT racing would be a little bit easier. And I, I suppose on Gran Turismo, with the excessive slipstream forces then yes it does make it even easier and the guy ahead really isn't making the most of the slipstream of the car ahead of him he pulls to go defensive on the right hand side might not have been the smartest decision but he keeps the position losing a little bit of time to the guys ahead doesn't get the best of runs into turn two and he's therefore on the back foot i'm also on the back foot against the frenchman behind so it's always a tricky situation to be in, attacking whilst defending at the same time. All I can hope for really is just to try to get through the best I can. And the battle up ahead really is raging for that second place. I can't quite tell exactly what's going on, but they seem to be side by side a fair chunk of the time. And they go very wide there. And I think the Porsche has just been sent off onto the gravel. The pink Audi comes back through. I'm not sure how he got so much acceleration and traction there, but he did. So he keeps his uh, fifth position at least. And a wasted cadet who was just in front goes up into fourth. Up behind the Irishman now in second. So there we go. Fourth place getting a penalty. And he's probably going to get another one there. Because you do have to keep two wheels on the red and white curb. And he didn't quite manage to do that. Into the hairpin then. Looking around the outside once again. Not really going to get anything except for a tap in the rear quarter panel and a spin on the exit of the hairpin well wow, okay didn't, didn't really see that one coming and unfortunately that drops me down into 12th place with only two laps left to do anything about it so that was a, a frustrating incident should we say into the chicane then clattering over the curb and clattering too much of the curb on that second apex and well that's what happens when you drive angry you get penalties you do silly things and well you get silly prizes for doing silly things past that Porsche who was slow off the turn Audi going for a nice little chop on the other Audi over the penalty line having to serve it there losing a handful of positions having to go defensive then against the Peugeot the incoming Peugeot I mean who even drives that car well obviously this guy behind me does so out of the hairpin can we maybe to gain some dignity and a position before the end of the race one more lap left to go after the end of this one 
Now I'm taking quite a big, uh, a big risk here because I'm on my main account and as we go actually for a really nice move, almost bottling it at the chicane, almost, but not quite. My bottling days are almost over. So I've actually got the number one car here, so I've got the highest driver rating, so quite a bit of a risk being taken and I probably will go down in driver rating. If we make contact with this guy, I was giving him space, he obviously wanted a little bit more. But it's going to be an 11th place. Disappointing. Really disappointing. So we go again. This time I've whipped out the Audi R8. You can see once again, bottom right of the screen, I'm number one. The highest driver rating. At the moment, my driver rating is around about 62,000. The highest it has ever been. So this guy trying to break the slipstream. And it's not going to work against me. I'm following him religiously. My, my, my religion is slipstream. I pray to that God every straight. So, through turn one, through turn two, bit of a slide, keep it, un keep it under control. And as long as we stick within that slipstream, we should be okay. And it's gonna be quite difficult, I think, around the circuit, in even cars, to go for that move. You just have to be really close, and I think just hope that maybe on the main straight you're close enough to try to force something to happen. So, through the long, Sweeping right hand of turn four into turn five. Difficult turn this down into second gear. Well, actually, no, down into first gear. And back up into second, of course, on the way out. Then down the hill, looking for the curb on the right hand side and breaking just before the beginning of that. And then this is a really crucial corner, this. Really easy to kind of get the car loose and out of control. As we go through the right hand up, over the crest. Probably didn't take enough power on the exit. We have a Subaru behind, which is kind of uh, good news for me, because I don't think it's the best car around here. So fair play for using it, I suppose. But all, all I need to do, really, is just keep on the tail of the Audi R8 in front of us, and we should be golden for at least a second, as long as we don't bottle it. So coming up towards the chicane here, then. Very difficult chicane. You really do have to maximise the kerb. And this guy has maximised the curve. On the exit, he's absolutely bottled it. Absolutely bottled it. Got, uh, got himself completely out of control on the big yellow sausage on the exit. Too much power, and he spun himself round. So I'm up into the lead. Thank you very much for that, mate. Made my job very easy. I was kind of really contemplating which way I was going to get past him. But if they just bottle it for you, then you don't really need to do anything. So that turned out to be our 101st win, and how how on earth that's happened, I don't really know. But after the first race, I saw that my qualifying lap wasn't quite up there. I mean, it was decent, 145.467. Um, but on that first race, I was one tenth away from being like four positions higher up on the grid. So it's worth improving, which is what we're going to show here. Now, look, looking at the first turn, you're looking at this sort of black traffic light thing here on the left hand side and you're breaking just on that it's just before the 100 board and in the Audi R8 it sets you into turn one very nicely so through turn two sweeping over to the left hand side a little bit off the power gets the weight onto the front end bite the, uh, the car basically uh, bites a little bit more you get a bit more steering and then you can, uh, power out towards turn four really patient through this turn didn't really meet the apex at all and uh, on the power as early as you can while keeping it under control. Didn't really do my, the best job there. Lost actually a tenth through that turn. Into second gear, keeping it nice and close to the curb, and then back on the power. So I was on the I was on first gear during that last race, but I think second gear is actually the better and more stable option. Breaking just before the end of that curb, and a little bit of coasting I think actually helped uh, helped to settle the cars. The Audi R8 is a very very difficult car to drive. It does like to uh, slide and oversteer a lot. Looking for this sort of uh, inside curb. And as long as you've hit that or just almost got close to it, and um, you can begin accelerating once you're very close to that uh, little curb on the inside. Coming into the hairpin, you're looking for this sort of traffic light. Again, just before the 100 board, into the hairpin, the tightest corner on the circuit, down into the first gear for that one, on the power as early as you can. For the left-hander, as long as you keep two wheels on the red and white, then you're okay. As we go through here, and dipping to uh, left wheels on the green for a wider entry into this one, breaking before the, the, the gantry up ahead, down to the first gear and mullering the curb as much as we can, of course not as much as we did in the first race. 
So going through the final turn then with four temps up almost. And you can go through that final corner flat out if you get your line correct. 45.2, I will happily take that. That should see us in some good positions on the grid. Now for race B, uh, the, the grid is very important of course. Now our improvement there wouldn't have mattered here as even with a 45.4 I would have still been second. But let's see what we can do then from second on the grid. Now once again we've got the Frenchman in the orange Audi R8. So it really just depends on the time of day that you drive sometimes because sometimes you'll have a lot more players, especially during the evening hours, you'll have a lot more competitive grids. This point here playing during the middle of the day, so not quite as many people as um, there was in race one. I think that race one was a very close fought race, a lot of people very close on the grid. This one looks to be a 1v1 battle at Catalonia, aka the rust of Gran Turismo. Or is it? What would be the rust of Gran Turismo? I don't know. Maybe Blue Moon Speedway or something. Just something small. Or Northern Isle Speedway. That, that's, the, that's the rust of Gran Turismo. So coming down the hill then, still in that slipstream. I think I'm a little bit closer than I was in the previous 1v1 battle. This guy looks to be under pressure somewhat, despite having a very good qualifying time of 44.9. And not many people did get into the 44s for this qualifying. So he's moving over to the right hand side. You, you just know when, when someone does that, they, they're definitely aware that you're behind them. He wants to break that slipstream as much as possible. I'll go a little bit deep into the hairpin. As we come out of the hairpin, you can see how much he gained. Maybe a couple of attempts there, two or three attempts. Into the long right-hander. Two balls over the kerb. Kind of hooks you round there. And you get on the power nice and early. Over to the left-hand side, maximising the track width as much as possible. And then keeping it nice and smooth through here. Again, breaking just before the gantry. Into the chicane. And this chicane is uh, living, living up to its name of now, well, it's now called the, the chicane of bottling. Because for the second time here, someone's just thrown away an almost certain first or a second and just handed me a victory. So, I mean, thank you guys for doing that for me. It's really nice of you. But you really don't have to. Now, at the end of the race, again, quite a simple race that, given that um, everyone wants to spin out for me. Race win number 102. I'll take it. Thank you very much. Now, the chat... Okay, I don't know what's going on there. That was some weird alien technology once again. But um, there was there was some dismay in the chat, should we say. This Janin F1 seemed to be causing quite a stir. Um, someone says sorry to him, but pretty much everyone else was unhappy. So I really had to check this out by well, saving the replay and taking a look. What was up with Janin F1? Let's, let's have a quick analysis of what this guy is doing. So he's in the yellow car. So it all seems okay so far, and then no, okay, yeah, not, not great lateral awareness. Wasn't really aware of the guy beside him. I think that guy was fair to be there, looking around the outside. And again, uh, okay, a big dive bomb there, maybe not too bad. I think that was borderline okay. Didn't really see the whole move though. Let's fast forward. Come on, it's got to be worse than that, surely. Okay, he's dropped a couple of positions there. What's happened? So he's in fourth. And he just loses control coming out of that turn, turn 7, slash 8. Again, not really great uh, sideways awareness. Just turning in on the guy in 6th place now. Coming up towards the hairpin. This is... So, the orange got, uh, the orange Audi, he was in the lead. So, this is the same race, of course. So, he spun out from the lead. Now, he finds himself back there. Gets sh uh, sh uh, slammed off, almost, into the hairpin. But keeps under control. So now sitting in sixth place, looking to kind of recover as many positions as he can of, after the shame of bottling it. Oh, okay, what's going on there? Someone's missing. And as we come in, he's just punted him round, just completely smashed him off. So yes, chicane of bottling, but also chicane of smashing too. So for the second time in the same in the same race, that orange Audi really not having a good time with that chicane, bottles it on his own and then gets smashed wide by an angry Spaniard into this turn. He, he, loves a, he loves a lunge into that turn, does he? This guy. So he gets up back into 7th. Oh, there we go. Okay, so he's, he's coming through here, and he's going to serve his, 
He's ten years sent. He actually breaks before the thing. He actually slows you down, so you don't need to break. And he actually uh, gets a big, big love tap in the rear end. There goes the Frenchman, the angry Frenchman. And uh, yeah, so this guy's serving his ten-year sentence at the penalty zone. They're just shoving that guy wide. Ruthless. This is absolutely ruthless stuff. Does he do anything else? <laughs> Almost has a big chop at the German. <laughs> into the chicane. This is absolutely shameful driving. He has committed so many crimes against motorsport on this day. And he finished 13th, so he did have some penalties against his name on the line. So, let's just continue and finish the video on a good note, shall we? Uh, so this race, again, in the Audi, started from pole, and oh god, that's not good news. Number of the Devil has appeared with a 666. Uh, the omens are bad, but we do actually win the race. And that is going to uh, bring the video to an end. I do hope you enjoyed it as always. Let me know your thoughts. If you're new to the channel, then maybe consider subscribing. And I'd just like to say thank you for everyone for your support. And thank you for making it this far into the video. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.